most of the um most of the other youtubers are kind of they're like hey we realize you're probably gonna clip our stuff right this one is long and so i'm not gonna do the whole thing let me tell you what happened. So this guy came out with a video, uh, looks like about two hours ago, um, about uh, Russell Brand, who apparently has four women who have come out with allegations of, I mean, I'm not monetizing my videos, so I don't think it's really a problem for me to say these things. I know it's a problem for those of you who are trying to, like, throw commercials up on your videos. He's being accused of rape. He's being accused of sexual assault. And he's being accused of, um, like, some serious abuse, like emotional abuse. And there are four women, um, at least one of them is underage, I mean, I just watched it, but I was kind of like half-heartedly watching it while I was going through this. There was a 16-year-old involved um, who he also mistreated. But, you know, I, I don't know why anybody would be surprised by this. I, I really don't know. Okay, so he's asking his audience, do you think it's a smear campaign? Um, wasn't there like some major allegations against how he treated Katy Perry when he broke up in that relationship. I mean, I feel like we already knew this about him. And um, that he just hadn't gotten caught yet. Right? So, regardless of what the timing is, um, in my thoughts, you have four people who probably feel like they have no empowerment and they don't know each other but once they find out there are other victims it's like okay i'm ready i'm ready to speak my piece right i'm ready to talk about how he tried to put his penis down my throat and choke me I'm ready to talk about how he pinned me down and drooled into my mouth, right? I'm ready to talk about how um, he invited me over to his house. He already had another woman in the bedroom, and I said, I, I'm not into that. And he pinned me against the wall and pushed my underwear aside and raped me right there, right? These are the types of allegations we're listening to right now. Um, I will do him the favor of sharing the link when I post this. Um, but anyway, let's just listen to the last few minutes. And about friends of his who've been involved with Russell. He said, I know there are comedians who have made references in jokes to Russell's alleged crimes and have either been asked or told not to do those jokes anymore. Wow. In recent years, Brand has reinvented himself. By the way, that is uh, that is exactly how they basically caught Bill Cosby. It was the guy, um, i trying to remember his name. There was a stand-up comedian who basically got up on stage and started just rattling off all of the rumors that were floating around Hollywood about Bill Cosby roofing people. And, you know, that's that's what just happened with Danny Masterson. He was basically Bill Cosbying people. Self again, he promotes himself as a wellness guru to an estimated 28 million followers across social media, podcasts, and a live festival. He's become known for discussing conspiracy theories while offering advice on subjects such as relationships and addiction. Ah, and you know who else is a wellness guru? Um, Ruby Frankie and uh, Jody um, Hildebrand, also wellness gurus. These people are fucking crazy. So do I think this is a setup? No. I think these are the people who put fucking panic rooms in their basement, who are setting up bunkers for the end of the world, who are um, 
have like crazy ass uh, belief systems about what's going to be happening and they um, are violently abusive with the people around them. That's what I think's happening. Late 2020, Alice, that was the 16 year old, who is now happily married, contacted Brand's literary agent, Ankara Wood, the co founder of Tavistock Wood, which is owned by the talent agency Curtis Brown. Alice says she told Brand's representatives what he did to her when she was 16 because she hoped he had changed. She wanted an apology and, at the very least, for them to know the type of man they were representing. She says she was told Brand was away at a wellness retreat but that she would get a response. Alice eventually did hear back from a lawyer acting for Brand who denied her allegations. It was very aggressive, said very clear I was after money and implied that it was almost blackmail what I was doing. I've never mentioned money. The lawyer was the only person that's ever mentioned money. She replied to Brand's lawyer, emphasising that she was sharing the truth and had never asked for money. She said, I have spent too long recovering from these acts to have them dismissed or to be intimidated into invalidating my own experiences. To even imply that there is a quantifiable amount that would compensate for SA is frankly insulting. It would take his representative it's almost three years to say they believed Alice after we contacted them last week this is the Times, Brand was suddenly removed from the websites of Curtis Brown and Tavistock Wood, wow! The latter then said, Russell Brand categorically and vehemently denied the allegation made in 2020, but we now believe we were horribly misled by him. Tavistock Wood has terminated all professional ties to Brand I just don't even understand how these companies were still doing business with him because these types of rumors were already circulating in the arts when he broke up with Katy Perry. Wow. That's it. That's the story. And we've gone, it's exactly an hour we've gone with me reading. That's how crazy long this is. Oh, they've done another long article as well on the Times, just, you know, YouTube guru, guru Russell Brand's Many Lives. What a... Uh, you know, I'm responding with you guys. And mm -hmm. I started this, as you know, I started this by saying there's very much, you know, a smear going on, I'm sure. But this is quite, this is pretty tight. I think it's, And I know what you think. No, I think it's difficult for you to call this one a smear campaign. Because sometimes it takes a group effort to actually find the strength. I don't think that necessarily means it's a smear campaign. Um... But obviously you're a fan of this guy's. I've never been a fan of this guy's. He's always looked like a, a clown to me who is potentially raping people. I mean, I've been hearing about this guy for years and um, uh, he seemed gross. He seemed absolutely gross. Like I would not have had drinks with him in a bar. Let's just say that. And you're going, well, if there was a smear, it would be tight. And I get, okay, that's true. I don't think someone like Daniel Sloss, I think that's a really important part of this. I think he's, you know, he's, a, he's an alternative comedian. I don't think he has reason to come out and say those kinds of things. Catherine Ryan as well. We're not talking about the BBC getting him. Now, do I think the BBC or Channel 4 in this case and the Times take pleasure in taking him down? 100%. Because he's asking the wrong questions, 100%. And because he's taking eyes away from mainstream TV, he's showing people... Yeah, but they don't... It, it, I mean, seriously. It's not like they haven't lost their own people for various sexual allegations that have come from mainstream media, whether it be Fox News or CNN or, you know, like some of the other big networks they've all lost people over inappropriate behavior so you can't just be like well when it happens to to russell it's gotta be a smear campaign no uh-uh no i mean come on we've been watching this guy now for a couple of decades at least and um he has not acted like a respectable dude at any point in time he certainly hasn't showed any level of treating women properly at all in the entire time that he's been a celebrity. So I, I don't see how you can just like immediately jump to, obviously, it's a smear campaign. Okay, well, was it a smear campaign against Bill O'Reilly? Was it... Um, 
you know, a smear campaign against, who was the guy from CNN that was like, um, had a, his own sort of lock button in his room. <laughs> a lock button in his room. He would lock women into his room. You remember that one? Um, there have been a lot of men that have gotten outed in the last few years for their sexual deviance. And, um, no guys, no guys, this is not a smear campaign. This is you being an asshole and hurting people and it's time to face the music. Like me, how to YouTube. I have no doubt that that has some role to play in how fervent they were in d uncovering these stories. However, some of that stuff described, the problem is that it, it, it links up. Several different women described this glazed over look in his eyes, this darkness that he gets in that moment. And that's scary. And I know a lot of you are going to say, no, no, but you know, it's, and I get it. And you're welcome to that opinion. You're welcome. And we don't know enough yet. There's more coming out. I'm reacting in the moment now, which I know is often a mistake. And if you do, if you disagree with me, put it in the comments below. Put it nicely, please, because you're allowed to disagree. And I encourage disagreement on this channel. It does hurt. I can't keep reading negative comments. I'm not, I'm just a guy trying to work this out like the rest of you. I have no aim. I am outside of the mainstream bubble myself. I'm a YouTuber. All of my earnings come from this and locals, andrewgold.locals.com. That's where it comes from. I can say what I want, okay? And I want to get it right. Mm -hmm. Some of that stuff sounds abhorrent. It links up with some of the stuff he has said about himself. Some of it is not illegal. In fact, most of it is not. That's that has not, to be remembered no. as well. But it'd be interesting. I'm sorry, most of it is illegal. What you've described on this video is rape in a couple different ways as well as statutory rape and um yeah it's fucking illegal like no okay so they're saying that in the uk um the age of consent is 16. they're trying to change the law right now on that right um but fact is dude was like in his he was like 30 right it's like 30 having a relationship with a 16 year old and then shoving his dick into her mouth against her will. That's rape. That's fucking rape on two levels. Um, the things described by these women are um, absolutely sexual harassment and stuff. I don't think that this guy can tell you that those things are not illegal. Um, I, I think that, uh, that could absolutely go to court because, um, it's, it's a matter of consent. And if these women did not consent to what he was doing to them, then that is sexual assault or rape, depending on what, what he did in this scenario, right? going forward to see if legal action is taken against brand this is going to be huge if criminal legal action is taken if civil action is taken what i'm interested in now okay i've asked you the one two and three is he guilty is he not uh, uh are you somewhere in the middle and it was a huge mix what i would be interested in now are you somebody who at the beginning of this thought definite smear campaign and after i've read it all out has changed their mind if so put a one and if your mind is if whatever you think stayed the same the whole way through you know what i don't think it's a good I, I, you're the second live streamer that i've seen do this we're like put a one for this answer and put a two for that answer i don't think that's a great idea because first of all it's only going to work while you're live streaming so those of us who see it like an hour later like me um, I'm not going to be responding at the right times, maybe, or whatever, because, like, you've, you've asked at least two or three questions now. Answer one for this. Answer two for that. I'm, I'm just giving you my ADHD response right now. That um, it's not um, efficient to 
ask people to reply with numbers unless all you're looking for is a bump in your algorithms because uh, when people go back to look at this they're not gonna see it in real time they're not gonna see the answers in real time like put up a poll that's an actual option that's an actual option on YouTube you could put up a poll well, I don't know about that. All right, I'm just talking to the people who started by thinking it was a smear campaign, right? Including myself. I have moved a little bit in this, in watching, in reading this. So put a one, if you started thinking a smear campaign, put a one if you've changed your mind on that and you're now open to the possibility this is actually a bit more than that. And put a two if you, you're sticking to your guns. No, this is all made up. That's what I'm interested in knowing. And that's what this channel's for. This is that's what we're all for. That's why we're here, is to listen and learn and try and get to the truth. See, there's a lot of ones there. And that's, that's hard, by the way. Like, to change someone's mind in one hour, wow. it just took an article from the Times for me. Um, some people are saying... Unsub well, that also says a lot about your audience. Okay, let me pause this and see if I can find some more information. Okay. I got, I got some extra stuff. Did Russell Brand file for divorce from Katy Perry? 14 months after their wedding. Russell filed for divorce from Katy in December 2011. So this is right around the time. If you watch that video um, that that guy did, um, this is right around the time that he's also getting accused of sexually assaulting other women, right? Russell filed for divorce from Katie in December 2011, which he told Katie about via text message. That moment was documented on camera and appeared in the 2012 documentary, Katie Perry, Part of Me. Okay, so this is part of it. Looks like it's part of an article. Who's this? This is Alf. I have to help her. Our mission is to find the weapon designated Alpha O. You are authorized to kill on site. They're coming to get me. Your personal escort, okay? I'm like a bodyguard. You have to protect her. I'll do anything to keep us safe. The Creator, rated PG-13, okay. only in theaters yeah, September okay, 29th. Okay, Get tickets okay. now. Okay. So what happened? He's a very smart man, a magical man, and I was in love with him when I married him, he told Doug in 2013. At first, when I met him, he wanted an equal. And I think a lot of times, strong men do not want an equal. God the damn, side, another ad. They took better care of me than humans would have. Joshua, take care of her. I promise to keep us safe. What do they call you? What's your name? My name is Alfie. You're my friend? I'm like a bodyguard. Oh, Our mission is to find the weapon designated Alpha O. They're coming to get me. I'm getting you out of this. Oh, cheap belt. The Creator, rated PG-13, only Peter September 29th. Oh my god. I don't, you know what? I don't even know what this is. Fuck all that bullshit. All right, so um, he's a very smart man. Blah blah blah. At first, when I met him, he wanted an equal, and I think a lot of times strong men do not um, do want an equal, but then they get that equal and they're like. I can't handle equalness. He didn't like the atmosphere, 
of me being the boss on tour. So that was very, that was really hurtful. Um, it was very controlling, which was upsetting. She added, let's just say I haven't heard from him since he texted me saying he was divorcing me. So I don't know that, I don't know that she necessarily had any sort of, um, abuse experiences per se, or if she's just keeping them bottled up. But this was right around the same time frame. This is right around the same time frame. She, hold up, sorry. She added, let's just say I haven't heard from him since he texted me saying he was divorcing me, right? Yeah, because that's, that's what you do with a spouse. That's really cool, right? Katie also called their romance interesting and stimulating in 2020 during a 60-minute special and added, it was just like a tornado. It was everything happening at once. Katie, are you going to come out and tell us what really fucking happened? Because we've been hearing rumors about this bullshit for a long-ass time. And if you were married to this dude, you clearly have eyewitness accounts of what kind of person this dude is. What did Russell Brand say about Carrie, Katy Perry, right? Some aspects of it were, like, amazing. Russell told Bear Krills in August during an appearance on Running Wild with Bear Grylls, The Challenge. She's an amazing person. And it was kind of incredible to live for a moment in that eye of the cyclone type aspect of fame. It's almost like they coordinated their answers, right? Like she's calling it a tornado. He's calling it a cyclone. It's like they had some sort of gentleman's agreement not to disparage each other after the marriage. <clears throat> he added, aside from my sort of feelings of affection for Katie, it's a time that I remember being a little bit chaotic. <laughs> Especially since this is literally the time that these women are accusing you <laughs> of attacking them, but okay. And a bit for me to speak for myself, a little disconnected. I loved her so much, it just seems like the sensible thing to do when we got married. Okay? God damn, why would anybody, like, Look at, oh my God, hold up. But once they were married, he admitted that he recognized that it isn't really working out and that it was a difficult situation. Look at how fucking crazy this dude looks like. Like, why would, I, I don't see, okay, look, I, I, I tend to, um, I tend to be attracted to tall, dark-haired men. This guy looks like fucking Charles Manson to me. He is, he does not look attractive whatsoever. Like, I, I am not seeing it. I don't, mm, 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 no. And I didn't find the guy funny either. And then, like, ten years later, I find out his politics are all over the place. Right? What else we got here? I was really, really in love with her. But it was difficult to see each other, he told Howard Stern in July 2012, only days after their divorce was finalized. 
We were together when it was right to be together. And when it wasn't, we worked it out. It was a lovely relationship. It mostly didn't work for practical reasons. Okay, I don't need to get into the who's Carrie Patey with now Katy Perry. Um, because, like, I don't even know if it's if, if she's still with him, <laughs> right? But point being is, um, it was a pretty, actually, like, they're trying to make it sound amicable. But um, if you're breaking up with your spouse, you're married to that person, and you're breaking up with them over text, that's already an indicator of what kind of person you are. Um, but these stories that are coming out in four different news publications today um, indicate that he was sexually assaulting other women right around the same time period and before and after. Some as far back as like the early aughts, some as recent as one as recent as like 2020 but a couple of them were happening right around the time that he was dating Katy Perry um I hope he sits in a cell right next to Danny Masterson <laughs>